holy shit, this is the podcast I've been wanting to do for a while. This is the pod. I mean, I'm a fan of this kid's. He's got a vlog, Nathan Florence. He's a surfer. He is, um, he's got a vlog. I started following vlogs. I think I got introduced maybe to, by, I saw one workout video that Tom and I talked about on Two Bears. And it was this workout he was doing with his buddies. And then I got into all these surfing vlogs, like Jamie O'Brien, Kyle Lenny, like all these guys who had like these videos. And then his brother, I think his brother maybe did one. Maybe his brother did like a series. His brother is John John Florence, who I think, I'm, 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 I don't know everything about surfing. I follow it a lot. I think he's like the best surfer in the world right now. Am I right about that? Is anyone? He was, and he, we talk about that. We talk about his brother for a second. Uh, very interesting character, his brother, and the way he practiced, and the, what he, the way he looked at surfing. But we talk about uh, Nathan. We talk about his work ethic. We talk about his workout ethic. We talk about big wave surfing and fear of big wave surfing and, and being held under. We talk about all that. We talk about his mom. His mom's a gangster, raised three boys. Him, his brother John, and his brother Ivan, uh, on the North Shore in, in like by herself, real gangster. Um, we talk about him reconnecting with his dad and uh, teaching his dad to surf, and we talk about, I, I, and I want this to happen. I think Two Bear Sports Management might do this about putting together a surf trip, like a good surf trip to somewhere big where we bring a few surfers. I go as a representative of Two Bear Sports, and uh. I just booze it up and film it, and I make my own little docu series, documentary. Maybe we put it behind a paywall so we can re reimburse some of this fifteen thousand dollars trip that we're trying to spend. But I just think it's cool. I'm really, I'm really moved by what surfers do and 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 that lifestyle. I think it's really cool. It's like healthy fun. I want to find more healthy fun. And by the way, I will be taking a trip down to Hawaii to. Well, I'm not going to party with these kids. None of them party. I, I just want to work out and learn how to surf with them. I want to learn how to surf. To the point where I'm like, like, I'm not this guy that just talks about it and doesn't do it. By the way, I'm probably like every fucking comedy fan. Like, like it, there's nothing. I just feel so much better. There are people that are obsessed with comedy, that love comedy. They've never done it. Right. Oh, yeah. So that's what I am for surfing. Kind of. I've done it. I just bombed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. And I say this so that he hears it. One of my best friends. And we became best friends so quickly professional surfer check out his vlog nathan florence oh, Bert, oh i'm so sorry i've kept you waiting don't worry about it at all the legendary Bert kreischer and i'm I over here snoozing to you i have been i have watched so many of your videos <laughs> thanks for watching i uh i uh i i I don't even know where to start. I have first, first off, what are the odds I could tow into Jaws? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the odds right now. The odds are extremely high. <laughs> will you survive? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to make it out the other end, but you will tow into Jaws. Yes. <laughs> I keep, I watch, I watch a uh, tow in videos. I watch so much surfing shit. You'd think I'm a surfer. Like you'd Dude, think that's sick. How come I mean, you haven't come out here yet? Uh, you know what it is? Honestly, I got to I have water in my ear. Hold on. Um, I got to be honest with you. I've I've I grew up uh, sur I'd say surfing, but you would know it's not surfing. It's like if you saw me what I did as a kid, you'd be like, no, I understand what you did. You paddled out. You know how to duck dive, but you're you have no idea where to sit in a lineup to catch a wave like all that stuff. And yeah. I've been surfing. I have surfed. Um, but I, I, for some reason, I, I, I am fascinated so much about like, just like y'all's lifestyle, like everything about, cause you know, I think surfers got this rap as being like stoners and drunks and, and totally. you are, you are one and of that the healthiest. Was the stigmatism. And for years, I think like just grew up, people that grew up in California and it was that whole age, that hippie age and um, surfers were exactly like you said, beach bums and on the beach all the time. And it kind of, there's still those those types of there's all types of surfers now, but um, a lot of the pro guys have now turned into more legitimate athletes where they're like, OK, now we're training. We're not partying every night. Uh, we have fucking full schedules. We're in the gym every day and yeah. when we're not in the water and we have all our minds wrapped around either biggest swell we can chase or the next competition. Yeah, I, I one of the one of the first videos I saw. I'm trying to figure out how I found out about. Oh, I know how I found out about you. You and 
a couple friends took a boat somewhere. Was it in the Galapagos? Was it? What, what was that? It was like sponsored by, um, it was sponsored by somebody. And I want it, I, I want to say it was, I don't think it was your dad. It might've been your brother and you, and you guys were on a boat and you guys were like just fucking around in the water. And I had gotten really into following dudes who had sail, sailboating vlogs. And oh I found- yeah, no, my brother. Okay. You're right. No. Yeah. Um, that was two years ago. I think my brother has a boat, a big cat and he was injured. He injured his knee. He wasn't in competition and he is like hit. If surfing wasn't there, he, the guy would be on the boat and gone like water world. We wouldn't, we wouldn't see him. He would just be doing circuits around the world. Like, uh, so he loves sailing. So he's like, Hey, like I got nothing going on. Um, you probably got nothing going on. I was like, oh, hello, I have a life over here. Like, <laughs> get on this boat with me for a month and we're going to sail down to freaking the Fanning Islands, Palmyra Atoll. Yeah. Like, we're going to go for a month and we're going to find some new waves and it's going to be fit, sick and do whatever. And it ended up being such a rad trip. And that's for sure what you saw. Oh, I saw that video. And then, and then I'm being very candid. Uh, your energy, your energy is, is very infectious. And you have a very positive take on life. And, yeah. and then the next video I saw, and I showed this to Tom Segura. We, sh- we talked about it on our podcast. And I think this is when we first started like communicating was you guys taking all your all the kettlebells out to the beach and doing these like 100 fucking deadlifts or 100 squats <laughs> yeah. and a run and burpees. And I was like, I was just blown away. And I was like, holy shit. And like looked- we, we shouldn't be allowed to program our own workouts. We are a danger to ourselves like doing those. Oh, I was like, so, and then, and then it inspired me to work out. Like I was like, God damn it, man, I need to get fit. Like you guys are doing these, just the swim out to the buoy itself. And any open water swim scares me. Like I get like, I like, and then I started following your vlog and, and I found Jamie O'Brien through that. And then, and then I started like hearing a little bit about your story. You you took your dad and taught your dad how to surf. Mm -hmm. And, and I want just so everyone knows to catch up. Because they're probably like going, wait, who is this guy? I know Bert's talked about him a lot, but kind of a, if you can, without me having to do it for you, introduce yourself to the fans that are listening because you have two brothers, correct? Three brothers? Yep, 100%. Um, my name is Nathan Florence. I am a professional surfer. Uh, I grew up on Oahu in Hawaii, uh, which is an island. I have two brothers and there was Ivan, a Ivan and, and Ivan John. Ivan Florence, my younger brother, and John Florence, my older brother. Um and all we had to, or what we all we had to do was go in the ocean. We were yeah. literally grew up uh, on the North shore of Oahu and we went to school um, 60% of the time. And, <laughs> and the only other place my mom would say, Hey, you're out of here. Like you don't come in the house um, till it's dark. You can be back here at dark, but you're not coming in the house all day. And so we are the only thing we could do was just go in the ocean all day long. Like uh, when we weren't at school or whatever. So we, from a young age, were just trained to take care of ourselves in the ocean. My mom was on the beach, of course, watching us and a lot of the time. But we, it gave us a crazy base uh, for being knowledgeable in the ocean and becoming young watermen. And North Shore, for those that don't know, is the surfing mecca of the world. It is where the entire mm-hmm. industry, every year, every winter, comes here. Every pro athlete comes here. Every young athlete trying to prove or become pro comes here because every photographer is here. Every big sponsor is here. And that is because there is a seven mile reef line of about three of the most world-class waves in the world. And then all kinds of waves between that in one little area. And every winter it is just going off for six months. Um, and no, and all eyes are turned here. So we happen like fortunately to be raised in that, and we kind of just merged with the ocean. Uh, surfing became our careers. And with that, we were able to get sponsorships and do that whole thing. And for me, it was in the whole training aspect of it. It was an injury, got injured, my knee got injured. And I said, hey, I'm never gonna get injured and not be able to surf again. I'm gonna make my legs really fucking strong. I'm gonna get big Burt legs. <laughs> and so I squatted, I squatted for months, dude. And the, and the physical therapist was like, hey, don't do heavy, don't do anything heavy don't go past 90, like, don't work this leg. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. Like, I I need a big, strong leg to protect this healing ligament. And so I did my own rehab. And I'll tell you, they had suggested surgery, no surgery. I healed my knee 
100%. I have no scar tissue. I have no restrictions on it, nothing. I, I don't even feel the injury anymore. And I had an ACL that was nearly totally torn. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, meniscus was clipped a little bit. Like, I had it bad. And now I healed this thing just with training, and that just got me addicted. From there, it was just like training. I don't – a lot of people think I train – for my surfing, um, which in part it helps my surfing hundred yeah. percent, but training is just a totally separate hobby for me. Now I want to be better, faster, stronger in the gym. I want those workouts you see us doing are pretty much just let's load as much as we can in this workout and just see if we can even finish. Let's just like cause yeah. as much Dude, pain. As we push I follow your, I follow your, your whoop. I follow your whoop stats. <laughs> yeah. whoop stats are like, I look at your strain. I'm like, I mean, for anyone that knows, you you get, you can hit a strain coach when you go to do a workout. My strain uh, yesterday was like a big day for me. I had, I did a two day. I ran six miles and then I I lifted weights. And yesterday's strain was only a thirteen point one. <laughs> what? How? The six mile run on that? Yeah, Dude. I, but I my heart doesn't get up like yours. Like your heart rate, man. When you get you said the other day, I was I got caught in a riptide and paddled in a ch channel and your heart yeah. rate was fucking yeah. it was like the whole time. For three hours I, was like, yeah. oh, be. I mean it's crazy the yeah. um so you talked about those reefs so you guys just had like the biggest swell that's ever hit hawaii like mm -hmm. a month ago two weeks ago yeah. right yeah it was insane it was just it, like like i said there's all those there's those reefs and then there's what we call the outer reefs. And when the waves get bigger, they just break further out. And so that massive swell, like you're speaking of, came. And um, we went to, me and a couple of friends went to Jaws, the wave you're going to be surfing. That's a great <laughs> video for you to watch, actually, on our YouTube channel. Because that's what you're going to be doing. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, I swear to God, I'm going to pull in and then pull right out. That's all I want to do. <laughs> yeah, if you can get out, then a great success. A great success. <laughs> Hopefully, Kyle and he's there and we can get him in there to rescue you uh, in the aftermath. But it's all for the shot anyway, right? Yeah, it's just the shot of me. Just By the way, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I can legit snowboard i can legit wake uh like wakeboard like i and i i definitely could t i remember being in brazil one time and they were they had uh jet skis i go and the, you, you couldn't the wave was just it was like uh f closing out and i was like can you just tow me into one and the yeah. guy goes bro you're not ready to be towed into shit and i was like i think it would be easier to tow into it than it would i have always said i think towing into a wave would be easier than paddling into it yes that is a 100 percent true birth because you yeah. don't have to take the drop you don't have to match the speed of the wave with your own paddle power um once you're in the wave that's on you <laughs> what happens but <laughs> but towing in is easier to catch the wave for sure <laughs> So wait, what? So I've been to Hawaii. Hawaii is my favorite place in the world. It is my favorite place in the world. I've always said that. And I travel. I've traveled the world. I've traveled around the world four times, and I've been almost anywhere you could be. And I always say that that uh, Hawaii's set up for you to love it. Like they've set it up for, so that you go, ah, you're gonna love this because I want you to come back. That's our industry. Mm -hmm. And um, and I I've seen the break out at Haleiwa where you guys. So is Jaws near Haleiwa? No, Jaws is on a different island. Jaws is on oh, Maui. Oh, it's in Maui. It's in Maui, yep. right? Yep. So what was the break you guys were going out to from the Haleiwa? Um, you guys were all leaving out of Haleiwa. Do you, you know that one? Were we leaving on skis or were we just paddling out? I think skis. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what which wave that was. But there's a break on just off Haleiwa, right? Like, yeah, there is some big waves out there. Is it a big left or a right? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I yeah, can't remember. on Maui. There's some big outer reefs here. If we leave them from skis, it's probably to go to those outer reefs. The one at Haleiwa um, usually gets Haleiwa. The wave itself gets really big. Um, yeah. So we've done sessions just paddling out there. So when, so what? At what age did you like? How does it go age wise to the size of waves? Like, was there a certain size where you and your brother and you had like a group of like five friends, your brothers, yeah. and then three yeah. other guys? I saw the video about that. But yep. you guys all growing up, was it? At one point, one of you guys going, hey, let's go. Like, what age did you do, do pipeline? So, yeah, that's a good good question. Um, because, like I said, we'd grown up in it. We had a lot of, um, I would say, I guess you could say your fear tolerance, right? So, like, anything you can kind of get used to, um, especially things that you are afraid of. You can get more comfortable uh, being afraid in those situations. And some surf athletes, uh, you just see they – 
they never really get there. They never get comfortable. They're always a little afraid and, and those guys aren't interested in big wave surfing. Um, for me and my friends, we spent a lot more time at like Keiki Shore Break, which is like a dumping gnarly closeout shore break or like the sandbars than we did like practicing our performance surfing. So we were like, hey, it's more fun to go get sucked over the falls and held down at the sandbar than it is to go work on our turns. Like, let's go do that for three hours. When we were like 10, 12 years old. So like (laughs) from there, it was like, oh, like what next can we do? That's a little more scary. Like, and that was pipe. It was like, oh, earn your place out at pipe. So like 13, 14, we went out, sat on the side of pipe, watched it. Uh, One time the lifeguards told us we couldn't go out. Cause we were just too young. One time me and my friend Koa, we made it out. And then, um, we were quickly realized we were in over our head. It was huge. And we were like, Oh, we can't get in. We don't know what to do. Like we're just, we're just groms and we can't get in. Like, and luckily Hank photo, this legendary surf photographer was on a ski. He came in he's like, get on the ski, you idiot. I'm going to take you in. What are you doing out here? Like you're groms. And like we were like, Oh shoot. And we got kicked out again. And, uh, but, like just like that we just kind of just inched our way in and, and we didn't stop and eventually that led to sitting on the side of pipe catching some waves 14 15 moving into the pack and sitting under guys like jamie who at that time and still to this day are ruling pipe like they're not the outer priority pack uh, and we just over the years 14 15 16 17 18 we worked our way into the pack and, and earned our place and where we are now where we can paddle out and sit deepest and get the way as we want so wait so wait, how's that work is there is a i mean i i think there's a there's a myth about it and i know and i know uh there's like i i got into this deep dive on the hui is that how you say it but like is there is there a real pecking order of who can go out to pipeline and who can surf pipeline and it's almost like a country club for lack of better words yeah yeah totally no there is and um it is it is the best i can describe it is organized chaos so you're talking seniority so the who have been doing it the longest um and you have that generation who is doing it the best and and has been doing it the longest and then who is doing it the best and may not have been out there very much and those are like that's it in priority. I mean, I mean, oldest generation who's been doing it the longest and has the skill, they're top. Like no one's looking at their waves. Like the crowd parts for their waves. Like, so th- so literally, know. literally, like if a good wave comes and a guy that's like, say like just been there forever, wants it. Yeah. You, say you like just Derek go. or Mike Ho, who are the Ho brothers, um, yeah. like royalty in Hawaii. And um, Derek Ho actually just this last winter, I think he was in his 60s. He passed away. But imagine he's out there in his late 60s and his brother's still out there. And they're out there when it's big and gnarly and catching crazy waves, like (sighs) paddling into their own waves. So like they're literally royalty, (laughs) like that crowd parts. No one even looks at their wave. And and if someone is there, they quickly get weeded out. Like someone will tell them or they themselves will be like, hey, you're out of here. And like, you don't want to get talked down by one of those guys. Like, holy shit. So like. They're at the pinnacle. Below them is is like some of the elder generation above us, like Jamie, guys a little older than him. And Jamie, I'll just say right now, is he is the best ever to do it out there. He is yeah, the I, 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 he has I, the priority, the position the positioning, the skill, everything to manipulate a hundred guys and be in the spot every single time for a wave. So you'll see him catch a lot of waves, and that's due to his skill. That's due to his time put in out there. And um, just him being the best to ever do it in that lineup. That's, you know, J- Jamie O'Brien's an interesting guy. I, I ended up through you following him. Yeah. And he, he has a real, he has a real, all you guys have a real good spirit, you know? Like yeah. you guys don't have the shittiness. Like I feel f- like us podcasters, us comics, sometimes we end up, I don't know, you, you get done a podcast, you're like, what the fuck did I say about fucking reese witherspoon son of a bitch <laughs> you're like no i did it again <laughs> damn it i like her i like her and, yeah. but you guys you guys are all positive as shit and you and it seems like your days are filled like you one morning you went and you went surfing i think you worked out went surfing and then you're like oh there's still some sunlight i'm gonna go out and and foil board or something and I'm just <laughs> yeah like, yeah Jesus. i mean and, and you just said it like we can't be pissed about anything like we fortunately 
locked into these like that's how I feel anyway like I wake up and I'm like how did I end up like I'm living the good life I have nothing to complain about like I have nothing to be pissed about except when I freaking stock portfolio crashes but other than that I'm a good guy like my lady's like running out of the house with the, I see red on the freaking phone <laughs> Like, damn it. Uh, <laughs> you guys are fascinating. <laughs> like, I'm watching you guys all. You guys, first of all, you guys will murder a Red Bull or like a, a energy drink and no fear of anxiety, whatever. I, I have to <laughs> yeah, wake up all You just push through the anxiety. <laughs> caffeine you guys, addict, dude. I take way too much caffeine. I do caffeine. Like. But your buddy, who's your buddy, Zorad? Yeah. <laughs> Zorab, dude, I literally, Zord is his name, but he, he goes by many names. He's a kid. Uh, I, we started a YouTube channel together, and uh, I wanted to get into YouTube, and he had been kind of- It was the best fucking move you could have ever made. Let me I tell you something. I agree. And it is so smart because I found you, and I, and I, 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 talk about, I talk about you, maybe not Jamie or Brian as, mu as much, and I should, uh, but I talk about you and Kyleni. Kyle, and I think it's because I had said this earlier, but like, you know, I, I found you guys during quarantine and, and I was going through issues with my kids and and like and the kind of guys that my kids liked. I was just like, ugh. and then I found you guys. I was like, why well, can't I was like, I'm going to take my kids down to Hawaii and have them find some kids that are surfers that are their age that are they're going to because these all these surfers are fucking awesome. Like, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. So Jamie was actually the first to start doing it. He was like king of content, dude. When he was young, Jamie's he was, an interesting fucking guy. Totally. And he was making movies from a young age. And after he was done making movies, he was like, nah, YouTube. And he went hard into it. And, and he is a huge channel now. And he, he looked at us and he was like, what are you doing? Like, I see you, the amount of your surfing and doing all this stuff. Like, you got to be filming it and you got to be putting it on YouTube. Like people would just be stoked to like, check it out. And so I was like, all right, found Zord. We started the channel and the rest is history. And Zord, by the way, is from Hungary, moved to Florida, to Hawaii. So that dude has a sick story too. Holy <laughs> shit. So like with both of our personalities came together and we were like, let's go to the moon. <laughs> dude. I, uh, I, I mean, I'll tell you how infectious it is. I watched you just paddle out one time. And you were like, and it, you said it took, it was, it took you forever. It was like the longest paddle I'd ever, it was just a camera on your board, but you were smiling the whole time. And I thought, I wish I could work out like that and smile. I wish I had anything I could do yeah. and fucking smile. I remember that. And it was, that was like, at, at some point I had to start laughing because I was like, man, I'm a pro athlete and I cannot make it out. I can't get into the lineup. And I was looking at my friend Cohen. and I was like, we're, we're not going to make it. And we're definitely not going to do the walk of shame on the beach. <laughs> so let's keep going. If it takes us till dark, like, and we made it. <laughs> so what's, I'm curious and you don't have to get too in detail, but I'm, I'm really curious about how you guys like, how, how everyone seems like they have like $5 million houses on the beach. Like yeah, it no, seems like everyone's got great houses and it seems like, like Jamie O'Brien's right, right by P pipeline. Are you right by pipeline too? No, I'm in a, I'm in a condo at Turtle Bay. So, Turtle Bay. <laughs> so no, no million dollar <laughs> beachfront <laughs> houses for me. I'm living in like a, a duplex style, but um, yeah, what you see like real estate here in Hawaii is gnarly dude. Like I, I I honestly don't know if I'll ever be able to own unless I becomes make a lot more money than I'm making, but it's, it's gnarly at those houses. Like you said, they're like four or $5 million houses along the entire beach and they're being bought up like that. Like a lot of outside investors come in, buy the house, leave and leave it renting. Cause they rent for crazy money. People want to get yeah. vacation time. But then you see like the stuff you see is the elites of the sport. Um, Jamie, he worked so hard and he got that house at pipe. I couldn't believe he got that house at pipe, dude. Yeah. Those houses, like they're hard to, they're hard to get. And he, he was just patient and he waited and I think he got a good deal. And I was just so stoked cause he built, he built that house. He was able to design it. So he was able to design his dream house in his dream location. So hard work <sighs> paid off for Jamie, man. Cause, cause um, yeah, I bet it was, I bet it was pretty pricey, but he worked hard for it. And then there's like, like my brother, who is a three-time world champ, he is, <laughs> he's literally the 1% in surfing, the top level elite. He's my favorite surfer. And I'm a competitive brother, like, <laughs> like saying that, like the guy is gnarly. And so obviously he's in that top 1% of, 
of paid athletes, which he deserves because he worked hard for that as well. And he was yeah. able to get a house um, for himself. And that's a lot of times the house you'll see us filming at or walking through to go surf. This podcast is brought to you by Tushy. Look, I grew up in Florida. Summertime in Florida was swamp ass season. By the way, I'm living in Serbia right now. I would love a Tushy because I've been using their paper and their paper is rough. Very rough. I got to be honest with you. The benefits of abusing Tushy, just butt sweat, just... It just accumulates down there. You can sop on, hop on a tushy and just clean yourself out. I've been hands free forever. It's good for the environment. It's good for your. It's good for your own sanity. Think about it. If you got shit on your fingers, would you just wipe it off and go on your day? No, you clean it off. I'm telling you, it's it is eco friendly, and, and and we're losing twenty seven thousand trees each day to half ass our butt hygiene. Bidets do not waste water. Stop spreading your business around your bubble with TP. Just use a tushy, wash it. I'm telling you, it's better for the environment. Blast away, hose it down. I wish I had a tushy attachment. Starting at $9.99, the tushy bidet installs in just under 8.5 minutes and requires no electricity or additional plumbing. Attach it to your existing toilet, drop trowel, and watch your anus say, holy shit. Put your feet up, try the tushy ottoman. Poop to poop at 100%, 100% of the time. Make the restroom your best room with the complete Tushy system, including bidet attachment, ottoman, toilet brush, and Tushy stand and tissues. Go to hellotushy.com slash birdcast to get 10% off your order and free shipping. This podcast is brought to you by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip the trips to the grocery store, which we have gotten so used to recently, and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Uh, HelloFresh cuts out the stress of meal planning and grocery store tips so you can enjoy cooking and getting dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. That is fantastic. For our family, that is all we do. And what's amazing is that it, it plans our evening every night. We all get together. We have dinner together. They offer 25 recipes to choose from each week, from vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all the recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. HelloFresh has been named Newsweek's most trusted meal kit company of 2021 with over 4 million household serves. Get better value. HelloFresh is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant. That's a no-brainer. I miss it. I'm, I can't wait to get home and have a HelloFresh with my girls and sit down for dinner and talk about that trip. That is the best part about it. It really teaches you how to cook. And, and, and it teaches you shortcuts for when you don't have time and you don't have a HelloFresh online. You all of a sudden know how to pick things up, throw things together. It really is almost like going to culinary school a little bit. Make sure to go to HelloFresh.com slash BurtCast12 and use the code BurtCast12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash BurtCast12. And use the code BERTCAST12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That is America's number one meal kit. This is going to sound like very naive, but why is your brother so good? Like what makes him I have good? my theories, and I think it's, I think it's what makes every great, um, well, those, those pinnacle athletes good. I think it's when someone with, um, an extremely hard work ethic gets combined with good genetics in the right environment. And like I told you before, when me and my friends were taking off at the sandbar and going over the falls, John wasn't there. He was there practicing what he wasn't good at. It. Like his weaknesses, like I need to learn air reverses, spend weeks learning air reverses. When he's young, he's 11, 12 years old. I need to get better turns spend weeks doing that. He was doing that when he was young. Ever since he was really? young, he was working on his surfing, working, 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 working. And I think it just developed him and him into the surfer he is today. Even now to this day, he's at the top level. We go down to the beach and he has these micro goals in his head. He's like, I'm not going to bog on this certain part of the turn. I need the board to react here. Like he's just working on his surfing and he's at the top <sighs> level, dude. And, and from what I see of every other athlete like that in every other sport, they're number one. <laughs> you know, do, do you know? Do you know who you that just sounded like? This is going to sound crazy. I don't know how much you know about comedy if you follow comedy at all. But that reminds me of Bill Burr. 
Yeah. So like Bill Burr's a good friend of mine and he's arguably probably the best comedian of our generation. And he uh, will take little things. It's I've learned more from being around him. And I, I, I'm I, look, I'm I'm happy with where I am in comedy. I don't need to be Bill Burr. But man, I love learning from that guy because he looks at it. and He goes, you know, in this special, I didn't really have any act outs and I should do an act out. I'm going to work on an act like little things like that. And it's crazy because guys like that at the elite level, when they're learning, you learn how to even learn from them because you don't know what to look for to fix on. Like for me, I don't even know what I'm looking for to get like better at in certain things or where to start where John's like, he's learning at such an elite level that he's thinking of things that I've never even thought of. Like how does the foil and uh, tip of my fin feel like it doesn't feel right. I need to change it a little bit. I'm going to sand it a little bit. Like, like, like he's that in tune. And I'm like, damn, I'm, I don't even know what fins I'm using. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> I need to get on this. <laughs> so when you guys were kids, did you guys, what, at what age did you start making money surfing? Um, I think we were around, so we're all two years apart. So we all got, we were on four, I was around 14 or 15 and we were all on vans together. Um, van shoes. And then you're still sponsored by vans, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still on vans. Me and my younger brother are still on vans and that's been an incredible partnership for like Fuck yes. nearly 15 years already. And I'm like 26. Holy <laughs> shit. My, oh, daughter, yeah, my daughter's just started awesome. rocking vans. And I was like, and I was like, finally, like I've been waiting for you guys. Like, you know, when you, you know, it's cool. And so I take, there's a van store in the mall here and I take them in and be like, why don't we get you guys a pair of vans? And they're like, uh, dad, I don't want them. I don't want them. I don't want them. <laughs> take them back by the next day. Oh, what do you think about some vans? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, that's great. 14 years. And then, and then, and then does, how does money work? Is, is it just sponsorships? Do you, I mean, obviously you're getting paid from your YouTube, you, yeah. you get sponsorships, do you make money in contests? Is money yeah. in contests any good? It's not the bad. I, I, for me personally, for what I see the athletes, the work they put in um, and what they do in competition, especially the big wave tour, I don't think the prize money is where it should be, but it is good. Um, like, especially like the Jaws event, like, dude, <laughs> that's a could be a life ending event, like 25 foot jaws. Here's 50 minutes. Go catch as many waves as you can and then do it three times in one day. Like, <laughs> dude, that's a gnarly event. And you, and these guys are getting like 25 grand at the end. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're like, <"Where's> that? <laughs> I'll do it for free. <laughs> like, like, this is crazy. But, but yeah, so it'll, there's prize money in events. There is most of it. And most of a surf athlete's income will be from their sponsors uh, in a base salary form, probably with some incentives worked in for yeah. event wins or things like that. And so you social got media numbers now. I mean, that's where What's that? social media numbers now is where it would come down to. I think a lot of the brands have pivoted to, there's no more magazines. There's no more cover shots, things like yeah. that we worked for before. It's, Hey, what's your following, what's your reach, your interactions, um, all that kind of stuff. How come you guys, how come there's no surfing podcast? There is, they're just not very good. <laughs> I don't know. There is a couple that have just started this year though, that are, that are getting good. I think there's like the Aki cast. He's a, um, uh, no, I know, I know who Mark Acalupo is. Yeah, so he has one that he's running pretty successfully. Ah, but but this sounds horrible, and I, I hope that no one takes this disrespectful. But I think Aki's sober, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't I'm know. I like I the old 1981 Aki with the yeah. blonde hair. <laughs> that generation, boy. that generation was wild, dude. <laughs> dude, Brad Gerlach. Yeah, uh, there was there was so many. I was into so many surfers when I was a kid that I was like. That I was like, oh, they just seem like wild men. Yeah. You know, so like the surfers right now are doing a 15 day quarantine in Australia because they all had to go to Oz to do their, the, the tour is running. It's on. And they're like, you got to do Oz. Australia's like, you got to do 15 days in a hotel room. Um, and I'm like, they are so lucky. It is this generation doing that 15 day quarantine. Because if it was not, if it was that generation, oh, you just spoke God. about that hotel would be burned down 100%. Like those guys would have turned that into a rave sitting in oh, a room man. for 15 days. Who was your favorite oh, surfer God. growing up? Like, who did you love? Like, uh, who was your favorite surfer growing up? And then when did you first meet them? So I was really inspired by, um, because my direction, when I finally decided like, Hey, I'm just better in the bigger conditions. Like I'm going to aim my career at 
what I'm better at because I have an advantage in it. So it, that was the big wave stuff. Um, and that was when I started thinking like, oh, like I'm inspired by certain people. And that was like Cole Christensen, um, Nathan Fletcher, the Fletcher brothers. Um, Nathan Fletcher Ruth. is the first person I ever saw get a tattoo. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, swear to God, I remember I remember I was a kid and I saw it in a magazine. I think he had like an octopus on his arm or something. And I was like, and I was like, oh, my God, his mom let him get a tattoo. Like I was a kid. Yeah, he, like, he probably just went and got it. Like he, he's just such an individual independent. Or maybe that was Christian. Maybe that was his brother, Christian. Yeah, maybe. I, yeah, I, keep I, going, yeah keep those going. guys were like, they were like, for me, they were the pinnacle. And what Nate Fletch was doing at the time, he was just changing big wave surfing. He was trying new equipment. He wasn't afraid to experiment and push the boundary of what was possible. And there was a whole generation before that that was just super gnarly. I was just too young to fully like respect what they were or just know that how gnarly they were until I was older. But when I was coming into big wave surfing, it was those guys. And for Nate Fletch, he used to stay at our house sometimes in the winter um, for the season. And so I met him from a young age and we just became super close and he's also on van. So we started doing, we were able to do trips together and oh, wow. I got, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from him in the big wave arena, but yeah, he was definitely one of our heroes. I saw, um, I was on a flight with, um, what was the dude, uh, the young man, I want to be respectful. Um, the young man who passed away, um, uh, good looking guy. Uh, I think he has a brother and he was a surfer and he, I, he passed away in a like flying. I think it was, they thought it was maybe from spinal meningitis or, or, um, he passed away flying. He passed away like traveling, like he was flying and he got sick, and then he went to a hotel room and he died in the hotel room. I'm, oh, I'm really, oh, I'm Andy being Irons, Andy Irons, Andy Irons. Yes. I'm being callous. Yeah. Irons I'm, brothers, yeah. yeah, they they were they were the top level. Bro, um, I was on a plane one time with Andy Irons and his chick, and uh, and I, I party a lot, and uh, <laughs> and he, and I was <laughs> I was I was just watching. Yeah, he wasn't partying at all, but I was just watching. Like you just. They're like beach feet, you know, like beach feet don't have any lines on them. It's like white and then dark everywhere. Like I was just looking at him going like this guy's got the fucking life. He had like a sweatshirt over his head, sound asleep. Chick was gorgeous. And I'm just sitting there in a hoodie, fat jeans. <laughs> I got fucking McDonald's on my shirt. On the plane, yeah, like, from that double fist guy. and Tito's and soda. <laughs> like this guy, like, he looks satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I go, this guy's s- s- traveling the world. Yeah. But yeah, totally. I was on a plane with him one time. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we. I want to know about a little bit about your mom. Because your mom was a little bit of a badass. Yeah, totally. So my mom um, and dad, they were from the East Coast. My dad was from Philadelphia. My mom was from New Jersey. Your dad's from Philly? Yep. Where did you grow so, up in Philly? Um, <laughs> it's going to be this. I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> I thought Philadelphia was the city. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, they moved over to Hawaii when they were young. And they there was used to be these cruise ships inter-island. And so both started working on a cruise ship. That's where they met um, and hooked up from there. And then... They went on, I believe they were like, they were a wild young couple. They were partying and they went on a European freaking road trip and they have a couple of great stories in that, but that's where John was conceived. And then from there it was moved back home and it was one after another, me, then Ivan. And they, so they grew up and my mom was a surfer from, she was a young surfer girl from New Jersey. So on the North shore, she was like, Oh, this is, this is the evolution. Um, my kids are going to surf. They're going to at least know how to as well. And that evolved into all of this. But yeah, my mom still to this day um, paddles out to pipe, not on the biggest day, but she paddles out and surfs the side of pipe on her longboard. So yeah, she's she's a badass. Jesus. And your, and your parents were divorced, right? Yeah. They were divorced when we were young. Um, And then that was, was that's what I feel like. I read about your mom, your mom, or I don't know. I don't You look, I don't know where you find the information. So I either, I read it or I saw it in a video. But your mom was like a single mom fucking raising three boys who all turned out into like awesome dudes. And as a parent, you see that and you're like, fuck, that's a bad motherfucker right there. Yeah. 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 She ruled with a strong hand for sure. But um, three boys and and we were we were wild, like me and my younger brother, especially like we, we were wild kids. We were not coming home uh, when we were younger. And it just, I'm surprised as well. It worked out as well as it did. And uh, all three of us are on the right track. Because <laughs> it could have um, derailed a couple times. But uh, I saw the video. Happy. I saw the video where you, ta- you took your dad surfing. 
Yes. That was fucking awesome, man. Dude, I was so stoked to do that. So I got married this year and I'm like, dad. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. He um, lives in Florida and he is a painter there. Um, and so he's like, hey, I'm like, you got to come out for the wedding. Like come out a week before. It's going to be great. And then he's like, OK, I'll come out. And then he's like, I have one goal. I'm like, what? He's like, I want to be spit out of a barrel by the end of the week. And I'm like, <laughs> you're going from like base level to like spit out of a barrel end of the week. Yeah. I'm like, we can do this. We can do it. We got it. Come out here. And then we got as far as we did, as you saw in the video, like we got him standing up and riding for 200 oh. yards on a wave from nothing, dude, from from baseline. So this is my wife. Hi, babe. Hello. You can walk by behind us. <laughs> no worries. How you doing? Uh, anyway, so she, yeah, he, he, she. That's <laughs> we're not assuming. <laughs> no, my dad. <laughs> um, dude, we had him riding two hundred yard waves, freaking in three days. Three that's amazing. Sessions. That's it was amazing. Crazy. Hey, genetic ability, I guess. Like. Or yeah, maybe let's, it was let's, yeah. I don't know, but, <laughs> but hey, we were stoked. I was super stoked and he was stoked and he was like, I didn't get spit out of a barrel, but I was like, doesn't matter. Next trip for sure. With, with that kind of learning capacity. And was that, was Ivan in the water with you? Yes. Ivan was okay. in the water and our good dear friend Zord. Oh yeah, that's right. Zord. <laughs> and jo John and your dad have a, or uh, there's tension between them, right? Yeah, they're a little they're a little more distant. So like when we were when we were younger, John um, stopped going at a little earlier, stopped going to see my dad at a little earlier age. It was just that divorce tension kind of yeah. deal. But but that trip was really great because um, they weren't it wasn't bad between them, but it was they were able to just get a little closer. That's cool, so man. Me and my younger brother were were close with our dad for a lot longer. Really? Yeah, when we were younger. Oh wow! So um, so have you surfed at Mavericks? Uh, yes, I have. So why, why, what makes Mavericks? Like, and I say this as like a fan of the idea of surf breaks. Like why, how come Mavericks is so dangerous? Like what, what makes it more dangerous than I would seem, assume pipelines the most dangerous. Cause it's like the reef is a inch under the water, right? So pipe they say is the deadliest wave in the world because of straight number of deaths, most deaths at any surf break pipe. And like you said, it's, it's a slab, so we're not wearing the flotation um, that we would normally wear on a bigger wave. So when you get knocked unconscious, you don't pop up a lot of times. Um, so they're looking for a body that's floating underwater and getting pulled in the current away. And oftentimes, by the time they get there, it's the person is uh, has, has drowned or is done. So that's why pipe is kind of as dangerous as it is. But is, is that this is? I apologize to interrupt. Is that as dangerous for everyone all the time? Or is there like, um, like, is that, is that like a, it is. And it isn't like for me, I've fallen so many times out there and I, in it, honestly, it'll, it can happen on a two foot wave out there or a 10 foot wave. It doesn't matter. I've been slammed. Some of the hardest slams I've had on that reef have been on smaller waves on a smaller day. So it can happen at any time out there, but with being in the water as much as we do, we know kind of where not to be and how to, react instinctually underwater. <clears throat> I've had moments where my eyes are closed. Uh, I don't, it's odd, dude. I, I found it odd. It's almost like a six cent. I felt that I was close to the reef and got a hand up just in time to get block my face or something like that. Like you just, I don't know if it's the pressure of the water. You can feel when you're uh, close to the bottom because of the de depth on your ears or what, but definitely had a few scary, <laughs> whoa, and just in time caught myself before slamming the reef um so like you grow instincts to fall a little better but it could happen to a pro too just as easy really and so and so and but maps oh we we're talking about maps. Yeah, i'm sorry yeah 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 um maps i think is the is the bottom it's a wave that comes from deep water it's dark cold water and i don't know if that's just me growing up high but that's always disturbing to me is on the other side of your eyelids when it's closed, it's not like here in Hawaii, it's, you kind of have a sense of light behind your eyelids when you're underwater getting held down. Mavs, it's pitch black. It's like you're in a pitch black room. It's dark down there because that water's brown. Um, and the reef is shaped with these valleys. So it's like this bizarre reef with these bizarre ledges. And that causes these crazy hold downs. Like Mavs is known for two or three wave hold downs, which is you fall, 
you're held under for the wave that you fell on. It doesn't let you up. The next wave comes, breaks, you're still under. You're now getting pounded by a second wave on one breath hold. Another wave comes, you're still under. There's been three wave hold downs out there, like like spooky stuff. And there's been deaths out there. Like guys have literally two great surfers from Hawaii, Mark Fu and Simon Malassi, died out there. They drowned because that place is just gnarly. And they're not they're not fucking around. They know what to do. They're not it's not oh, like they they were some of the best big wave surfers in the world, hands down. And and it's just I you know, I've I've heard people saying, Oh, I got held down, but I thought it's one of those things where you pop up, take a breath, take a breath, wave comes down. You're talking, you get fucking thrown, and then you're just you stay under. How long is that underwater? Yeah, so most of the time it's like you said, you get worked and you pop up and you have a moment to take a breath and kind of settle yourself. But it happens when you cannot get to the surface. And we're talking on those big swells, it's 15 to 20 seconds uh, is the wave period. So that's the distance between each wave. And <laughs> so like, if you know, if you've been even worked on a little whitewater, five seconds, that feels like 30, 10 seconds, that felt like a minute long hold down. <laughs> so like, if you can imagine, dude, a two wave hold down, like you, if you're not unconscious, it has felt like you were down there for a very long time. Wow. Has, have you ever, have you ever been sitting in your car, looked out and then you, and just gone, eh, not today. I got a weird feeling. Yeah, I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've gone out with that weird feeling. And then really? I've sat in the lineup and I've said, today's not the day. I don't have it. I don't have to push. And then I've just not caught in a wave and, really? and you beat yourself up on those sessions. But like, I've definitely had it where I've paddled out and, it's that, it's that knife edge, like which way is the fear going to push you? Is it, and I've had it go one way where the, you have all this fear and adrenaline and it just turns to pure energy. Like you're like, oh my God, I, I'm so in tune right now. I can do anything I want out here. And then it, the other way where you're like, I can't feel my arms. I'm so frozen with fear. I don't have my reflexes. Like I can't even perform like this. Like I can't catch a wave. And then you don't get a wave and your friend gets the wave of the session and you don't let it happen next time. <laughs> I, I got anxiety. You guys were in the truck one night and uh and you were like, "Oh yeah, it's pumping at jaws. We're going to get in the plane and fly over." And you guys all flew over to Maui and then spent the night in a hotel, I think got pizza. I, I had a panic attack, a legit panic attack when you guys were in the car, we're like, "Oh, we're going to go catch a plane to to Maui." I was like, "No, let's not go. Let's not go. Let's just sit here and drink <laughs> beers tonight." <laughs> There's one side of my head literally saying that, like, you don't need to go for this one. Like, just let one go. Yeah. Oh, like, just stay home. It's more comfortable. Like, you'll be yeah. fine. And then it's obviously like, we have to go. We have to get the biggest wave ever. Yeah. Like, there's just two sides fighting. And like, like you said, all that, like, dude, we surf pipe all day because it's good on the rising swell. Then we have to fly to Jaws in the night, get food, get up at 5 a.m. and go surf and perform and 20 foot waves the next day. Like, the anxiety yeah. is <laughs> my heart, my poor heart. <laughs> no wonder my freaking woo stats are so erratic. <laughs> you, you guys had beers on the flight back. I don't know if you remember this, but <laughs> oh, the way, this yeah. is, I, you have, and I, I have, I had a beer with you. I opened a beer too, and I was like, we made it, we made it. Yeah, oh, it, like, <laughs> we made it. We it's, it's totally that. Like that beer is so good. At the end of the day, like I've, I've been sitting there pre paddle out in the days, and like, oh god, I just, I just can't wait till it's tonight and I'm and I'm not doing this anymore like I'm just oh. having that cold beer because just the anxiety like you just need to get it over with but obviously after you're like that was the best day ever like we did it we survived <laughs> we're brothers <laughs> like we didn't die again god that's so crazy what um what uh uh what's the deal with sharks or do you get scared of sharks um sometimes it's there's a spooky vibe out there like uh there's just you know what i've had sessions in scariest places where i didn't feel anything weird at all and i've had sessions in places that shouldn't have been scary and i felt weird and i think that's just human instinct like yeah. you know when something's watching you you know when like a predator like a shark is like in the area um but yeah it's it's there is have been shark attacks in surfing's history plenty of them but it's really rare and you know what it's it's their world like their playground and if if you get attacked like i honestly think it's like it's something with like you're encroaching too much on, on their zone it was a territorial thing i think it's very very um rare that they're eating you for food um, yeah it's just more of a confusion and hey get out of here you're in my space 
But um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's what a lot of people that don't surf think about um, surfing is like, but it's totally when you're in the water, it's, it's not the biggest worry. It's interesting. I, we grew up surfing at New Smyrna Beach which is like the shark attack capital of the world is what I'm sure everyone says that about their break. But, uh, but I remember there were days where you like go out and it was just crystal clear and it was sunny and it was just like not a thing. And then there'd be mornings where it was like overcast, it's dark, it's cold. And you're like, motherfucker. I remember getting bumped on the leg by oh a my shark gosh, and I, dude. and, but, and I, and I, have never i was standing too i was standing you're levitating <laughs> i was like, Whoa! Yeah, I, like I can walk on water right now <laughs> like, i can walk on water that right now so scary dude <laughs> yeah. i've never been bumped like i and i think about it sometimes and i can't i don't know what i would do i'd freak out 100 percent. so what so then what's your year look like so do you try how much do you travel to surf um so I'll just give you the breakdown of the average year. Um, not that I'll give you the cor not Corona year. Um, oh yeah. That, my bad. Which is <laughs> all winter all Hawaii, Hawaii waves are nonstop. Um, as soon as summer rolls around, we're gone. We're, we're flying. We're chasing all those swells then start coming to the other hemisphere. So we're trying to go to Australia. We're trying to go down to Porto, Mexico. Um, we're going down to Tahiti. We're doing as many trips as we can, Indonesia, chasing as many big swells as we can. Um, and that's how and do, our summers are. Do sponsors are. pay for that? Five or six trips. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I've, I've returned home from summers with an empty bank account, that is for sure. For real. And then like, I gotta stay home during winter because I have no choice but to stay home <laughs> during winter. Like, like I'm, I was, yeah, those trips are expensive, dude. Um, well, you know, especially, Tom especially now with dragging a, like you have your filmer and oh, you're yeah. doing all that and you're paying for that and you're trying to get good content for these trips, but it costs, man. It's, it's drains your account. So Corona year saved a little bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Segar and I just started a two bear sports management and uh, yeah, we signed our first athlete. Cortez Lewis, the handshake king. Yeah. Oh, what? Let's go. Yeah, we haven't seen him play football, but he does great handshakes. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's it. That's so, insane. He's a professional handshaker. Yeah, it's dude. He's awesome. He's awesome. He, he had a handshake. He played at Wake Forest, and he had a, a, a signature handshake for everyone on his team. You got when you see the video, what? you're gonna go. Oh, it's amazing. It's what amazing. It's the insane. best. It's the best. Hey, Halston, do you have Cortez's Lewis's handshakes? that you can pull up so Nathan can see it. It's, uh, it's amazing. And so we signed him as our athlete. And then we realized in signing him, there's a, there's some responsibilities that go into being an, a sports management team. So now Tom like, and wait I are trying to do that. Like, wait, what? Oh, I, we just yeah. wanted our own handshakes. <laughs> so, so Tom, Tom called me and he's like, look, I know you can think out of the box. We got to think of a way to raise money for our athletes. And then I was like, oh, we should <laughs> so start funny. here. Look at these hands. Okay. Okay. Fast forward a little bit, Halston. These are Cortez's handshakes, okay? Now, here we go. Everyone's got a, their own handshake. So, I don't know why it's playing so slow. So, everyone's got their own handshake. Wow. And it's just, oh, it's awesome, dude. I wish it wasn't playing in. I like you clicked the slow-mo on. The, he, made, he made a handshake for me and Tom. All right, you can stop playing it. What a beast, dude. Oh, he's awesome, dude. He's awesome. I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I, you know, I'm close with him. I'll get him to do a handshake for you and your friends. Dude, please. And we then he'll send it to you, and then you guys have your own signature handshake. We oh, have him on Cameo. For $100, he does signature handshakes for guys. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you can go on Cameo and go, hey, Cortez, That's me and my insane. brothers. Yeah. and, and There's I'll the business you. model. You're getting paid for handshakes. Yeah, and so that's well that we're he's one of our sponsored athletes. So we're trying to raise some money for him. We got him. We're getting. Here's where we really excel. We can get you track suits <laughs> and handshakes. We have a, two brothers in Uzbekistan who make Tom and I track suits. <laughs> that is so sick, dude. Oh, dude, our track suit game is dope. It is no way. dope. And what, and a turtleneck? Is it turtleneck track no, suit? Pull up. Can you pull up the Sewing Brothers, Halston, and show them our track suits? The Sewing Brother track suits are sick. And if you want. I can get the Sewing Brothers to hook you up and send Please. you some track suits. Please, I'd love that. My wife's not ready for me rolling around this house in a track suit. Oh, you don't know what these track suits look like yet. <laughs> these track suits are fucking awesome. They are awesome. Let me tell you, I, I really like, I wish I didn't have a career going on 
because all right, wow, see, yeah, right, dude, these are so legit. Yeah, pull up. Uh, do see if they have the. We got. I've got one of every one of their track suits. So, and then they've got these pinstripe ones that are pretty fucking sick too. But yeah, I'll 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 do a tag and a post today. Oh, they'll see this. I'm sure they'll clip this out, and cool. uh, and I'll get I'll get some track suits sent down to you. The fucking great Tom and I fell in love with them, and then now Dude, we have one of every color. The gentleman. Yeah. All right, you can pull it. The uh, yeah yeah I'll, I'll I'll do a tag of you in on Instagram and get them to uh, follow you and hit you up. Cool. But um yeah, those are the pinstripe ones. We got the pinstripes too. This podcast is brought to you by Blue Blocks. I got these glasses and I didn't know what they were. Leanne got them for me and I, I was not even paying attention. I thought it was a new prescription. And then I got them and I got them with these yellow lenses and these amber lenses. And I was like, what the fuck are these? I thought she screwed up. But it was all I had, right? And so I'm in Serbia and I'm on my computer. I'm on my iPad nonstop reading scripts. And I cannot see without my glasses. But what happens is when I'm on my computer too much, I get... I, I get a, a litany of things. I get migraines. I get anxiety. My stress levels go through the mo- roof and it, and it kind of fucks with my mood. I also get headaches. Uh, like it, it drives me nuts. I've been using these yellow lenses and it has gotten rid of all of that shit. I also have these amber lenses and I'm telling you, it is a game changer. They're, they look good. I wore them to the read today and everyone's like, well, those are nice. I was like, really? I mean, I, since I've been wearing them, I literally have no more anxiety being on my my lap, my iPad all day or on my phone. No more anxiety. And it's crazy because I thought I was losing my fucking mind. you got to try them out. The glasses come in prescription or non-prescription reading options. Glasses for every need. Blue light to help with digital eye strain. Summer glow to help with low mood and migraines and sleeps or improving your sleep. And they also have other amazing products such as Low blue light bulbs, red light therapy devices. God, man, you know, th- this is, I believe in this shit so much because it really, I, these damn glasses have, I've been like, man, I can be on my phone. I'm not like getting stressed out at the end of the day. They're fucking awesome. They ship worldwide. They have blacked out sleep masks, masks, red light therapy devices, and 100% blackout sleep masks. Oh my God. All backed by science. Easy returns and exchanges. All you got to do is go to Blue Blocks. Dot com slash Bert and use the code Bert to save 15% off this B L U B L O X dot com blue blocks dot com slash Bert and use the code Bert save 15% off one more time B L U B L O X dot com slash Bert and use the coupon code Bert to save 15% off. I highly recommend these, especially if you're on an iPad or an iPhone and need glasses like I do. I highly recommend these. I what if I sponsored a trip, right? Yeah. So like what if I sponsored a trip for you and your buddies and Zorb mm-hmm. and uh and I pay for everything, right? I'd love I'm not that. I'm not going on the trip. <laughs> yeah, I'll go on the trip. I'll go on the trip. Yeah, please. I'll go on the trip. Of I don't have to surf. I'll just party balls and watch you surf. And then Dude, I can I can please, shoot content there. That. that would be so fun. Let's plan a trip. What's I always wanted to go to Tiapu. What did you say? Was it Tiapu? Is that the name? <laughs> <laughs> is that not it? Is that not it? <laughs> I fit to eat because I don't want to say it wrong either. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> we'll say with Tahiti. We're going to Tahiti. Yeah. We're, We're going not going to say the wave. <laughs> is that is that a fun wave to surf? Oh yeah, that is a fun wave to surf. But uh, yeah, it's an it's a gnarly wave for sure. And then I'll get us a boat, okay? Let's so that we it. have a boat, like a party boat that yes. just sits on the side, so you can surf up to the boat. And just every now and then, every now and then, I'll need you to come out of the barrel and just go, uh, Bert's new tour starts January 9th. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> automatic. Automatic. You pay for the trip. You get whatever you want, Bert. Dude, send me send me how much that's going to cost. I can afford I It's a write-off. It's a fucking write-off. It's a write-off. It's a work trip. It's, it's an advertising trip. trip. It's a promo no. trip. I bet they have great beer in Tahiti. Mm. Bet ice cold Tahiti beers. Called Hinano. It's so good. So wait, do you do you drink or or at all or just to, every now and then or? Yeah, it's I'm not a casual drinker, as in having a beer every um, evening or any alcohol. Um, like I I won't notice. I'll go three or four months without having drinking, or um, but after like. 
things like that, like that Jaws day or whatever. And yeah. it's not even a, a goal I set out to do or anything. I just, I'll drink with friends if they're having a beer. Um, God, if not, that must be nice. Yeah, it is nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not a daily thing, uh, but I yeah. do drink. I feel like I feel like I, I really honestly want to um, come down to Hawaii and hang and like do one of your workouts. Like I was, I, I literally, I, I I'm going somewhere for a while and uh, and I yeah, I just edit that part out, Halston. I'm I'm edit this out too. I'm shooting a movie for three months, and so yeah. I I wanted to so badly to go down to Hawaii and like hang out with you guys. None of you guys drink, so I'd be like the one. Guy, you're like, Bert, you got to stop, man. If we're going to get up and go surfing, you got to get to bed, man. And I'd be like, come on, man. This guy, this guy does mashups. He's on TikTok. He's awesome. <laughs> Bert, listen, we'll make that part of the trip. Let's see who could drink the most, work out the most, and not die. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Imagine I, our roof recoveries. It's like, you're 5% recovered. Okay, we're going to do 100 squats <laughs> a day, like uh, at the bay. We'll see who survives. Like dude, sweating out the tequila. Like, oh. <laughs> Sun, who put the sun right there? It's flaring down on us. <laughs> Let's go. I, uh, I, my whoop recovery is for shit. I had 13% yesterday. <laughs> oh my God. I've had that like once and it was 4th of July. It was not good. <laughs> what are you drinking now? Is that an energy drink? Um, this is the little fit aid things. It's like a little pre-workout or it doesn't have really caffeine it's just bcas glucosamine and electrolytes and all that good stuff i drink them like after i work out or before so is your diet pretty strict or do you just eat whatever because you're young and my diet is the most erratic ever i'll go two weeks super strict and then two weeks of like taco bell and filet fishes from mcdonald's like <laughs> it is bad dude it's not good like my friends are like <laughs> how do you eat like that? Like, it's not healthy. And I'm like, we watch next week. I'm going to eat really healthy. And you, you'll see, like, you'll see. But <laughs> if, if I'm surfing a lot and like doing a lot of stuff, I can kind of eat whatever. Um, but if I stop surfing, I'll, I'll gain weight pretty quick. So I kind of got to watch it. You don't know what that you just said. Like you gain weight quick. <laughs> yeah. I gained like five pounds last night. <laughs> I lost five pounds last night. <laughs> <laughs> so when's this Tahiti trip? I'm really excited. What would okay. be the perfect month to go to Tahiti? Um, we're coming up. We're coming up on them like Shit. April, May, June. Um, it could be could be sick of it. But with the COVID thing, I don't know what the restrictions are. We yeah. have to look into all that. But dude. Okay, let's. what place, would be a good a place to stay? There's an r- epic family we know down there. They will set it. They will set the whole deal up. Epic really? zone to stay. Epic food. Um, how much? How much do you think it's going to cost? Give me a price point. Give me like a, a just like uh, give me the price point of this is bare minimum. And then Bert, if we're going to have a good time. This is bare minimum. Yeah, I would say bare minimum 10 grand. And then if we go, if we want to be luxurious, We'll up those numbers as they come. I say, well, let's not limit ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 10 to 100 grand. Like. <laughs> yes, we definitely need those pink jet skis in the lineup now. Like, roll pink jet skis, go. <laughs> so who are we bringing with us? It's me, you, Zorab. <laughs> Yeah, Zora for sure. We did bring Mr. Cool, my younger brother Ivan, just because we no. gotta have somebody cool on the trip. Yeah. <laughs> what a great name too, Ivan. <laughs> yeah, Ivan Drago. God oh, man. Yeah, I'm I'm in. I'm in. I'm gonna make this trip happen. Because for okay, me Well, what's your program looking like? You got oh, comedy fuck. shows and all that coming up? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm sp- I was supposed to be in Maui, um doing shows in Maui, but uh I think they got pushed because of COVID, I yep. I think. Um, everything Dude, opens if up. If it's, you end up out here, you got to hop over to Oahu and hang. Yeah, I would definitely. I would. And by the way, Turtle Bay is one of my favorite places in the world. I, yeah. I've stayed. I've 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 spent a lot of time in Hawaii, and I fucking love it. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. My sister went to school on the Big Island, Hilo. Right? Is that the Big Island? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I I, and I'm I'm in getting in really good shape for me. I'm doing a lot of, uh, what's your goals with that? Are you, you just, you just want to lean down or you have a specific thing you're getting ready for? Uh, I'm getting ready for something. And so I, so I've, I hired a trainer and I'm working out for five days a week, um, with weights. And then I run five miles a day on the treadmill. And, but the problem is I also, I'm doing two podcasts a day, uh, sometimes four podcasts a day. And 
that last podcast, usually we just build a new studio. And, uh, and so every now and then, or not every, usually the, any of the live ones were partying. Yeah. And so, uh, so I'm, it's, there's no weight loss. Like I, I don't need to lose weight. I just want to be feel better. And right now I'm like a lot Perfect. stronger. Um, Dude, I, I tell your deadlift, your form, everything on point. Oh, it I, looks so good. I'm loving deadlifts. I've never done deadlifts in my entire life. We love deadlifts. I love deadlifts. Yeah. And uh, that night, I, I, I'll tell you what I'm obsessed with is the mace. Do you do much of the mace things? Oh, that weighted thing that you, you swing around? No, I've never done it. It looks hilarious. Dude, dude, I'm telling you, these things, we do these uh, training things where uh, they're very specific. It's hard to explain. But it's like a thrust, a row, and then bring it over. And you do like five on each side with 15 pounds. And my shoulders are on fucking fire. No way. Yeah. Hey, what, that. how, when you row, what is it? What is your rowing? Like, I'm curious, how long does it take you to row like 500 meters? Um, I don't know if I've done too many 500s, but I do like my best. 1k time was a 309 i think and then like if i'm doing a workout with a 1k row to start it off it'll be like a 324 Fuck. Um, okay i'm putting that i i, uh, I keep i keep everyone's rowing times kind of in my head action bronson's got a pretty fucking sick rowing time dude you have to do this row one that we did we were just got so comped out over it so it's one minute on one minute off you have to get 300 meters in the minute and you have to go as many minutes as you can getting 300 meters. So hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'm te I'm texting this to my trainer right now. And no, this is a sick one. All right. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to wonder if I can FaceTime her. Yeah. Get the, get the trainer on the, we'll, we'll have a talk with her. Okay. Let's see if I can FaceTime her. <laughs> you listen up trainer. You're out. I'm in. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the new trainer here. <laughs> this is, I've, dude, I've seen the workouts you guys set up for yourselves are fucking destructive. 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 So I mean, fun. It's a survival thing. All right. She's not answering. So what is it you, it's see, it's one minute on, one minute off. Yeah. So you can set the rower on if you have like a concept. Um, I have, yeah, I have a concept. Yeah. So you can set it on intervals, which it just goes a one minute timer and then a, another one minute timer. So we go a minute on a minute rest and you go 300. You have to get 300 meters in that in minute, minute in a minute. So you go as many rounds as you can <laughs> holding 300 meters of rowing than resting. And I think um, my top one was 13 minutes, 13 rounds. So, so 26 minutes total. Yeah. <clears throat> That's tough. I'll tell you, my relaxed, my warm up row is, uh, is like, you know, two, uh, 500 meters in two minutes. So it's like, so 250 meters in a minute, my yeah. fast row, like when I'm pushing it, I'd have to, I'd have to push it to get that. And I don't know how many, I'm going to do that today. When I get to the, we're going do to the gym. Today, we do don't big surprise yourself. Like, cause the one minute rest is enough to catch your breath. But then around like the fourth, fifth round, you start feeling a little sick. You're like, Oh, <laughs> I don't want to do it again, but like you can't not get back on the rower because you've been resting for a minute, you know. So you're like, hey, damn it, I'm gonna try again. Like, frick. did you work out yet today? Uh, no, I. Yeah. That was the thing. I nearly missed the freaking. Fight. I woke up, dude, and it was like, I got the text from um, I forgot. Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, and he's like, I'll see you in 15. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> like, I'll see you in 15. Like, oh, it's it's crack of dawn over there, isn't it? Yeah, it was like eight, but it was. What fine. are you guys doing today? Um, we'll see. So the CrossFit open is on, um, which they do an online dude. You got to check it out. They put out epic workouts. Really? The CrossFit open is like an online, um, the first stage of the CrossFit games. And I'm a huge fan of CrossFit and the CrossFit mm -hmm. athletes. Like you talk about elite athletes and those are, those are the guys that I look up to for, um, all things training kind of, because they're just, I think they're freaking superhuman for what they do, dude. They do their main CrossFit games is three days, 15 events, 15 workouts in three days. Oh. And the guy on top is the guy that freaking smoked everyone in 15 workouts. Like, like not human kind of workouts. And that's Matt Frazier has been like the king of that. Yes. Matt Frazier. Exactly. My buddy just had him on his podcast and I was yeah, listening sick. and they were talking, and by the way, I'm getting ready to go do my workout and I'm listening to uh, Matt Frazier tell my buddy, he's like, yeah, one time they had us row a marathon. And I went, 
42,000 meters. So gnarly. I'll never do that. <laughs> I'll never do that. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? 42,000 meters? Dude, I was like, and he was like, you know, three and a half hours. And I was like, three and a half hours on a rower. Like my ass would be burning. My, I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. We did a we did a half marathon once, and I'll never ever do that again. Twenty one thousand meters, and it was I'll never never do it again. I got to the point where I couldn't sweat anymore. I had sweated everything there was to sweat, and my skin was just sticky, and I was just still rowing, like cramping, like like pure pain. But uh, but yeah, so the opens on, and they've announced two workouts so far. So I kind of like it's fun sometimes to do. I don't to just not program your own and and do what they program and see how you kind of match up with those athletes because you could see all the athletes time yeah. and you just feel like in disbelief at how they did that in that amount of time and what your times are compared to it i love the tap out where your brain goes where you just get into like yesterday we were doing five uh 500 meter rows and then straight into like uh whatever 45 pound kettlebell swings and then right back on the rower and you just no stop for three rounds and then yep. the last one there's yeah. sweat all in my eyes and i'm just fucking just going, I'm like at six going, is this ever going to fucking stop? <laughs> Please just be done. Like I just got to get to the other God side. God <laughs> dang. And where's the gym you guys work out at? That that was like a badass gym. Who? With the gym you guys work out at. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's a, um, Mahina's family. They have a, they just built out and me and the dad started kind of working out. He's worked out forever. And one of the your guys, wife, your me, wife, my wife's dad. Yeah. He kind of got me into CrossFit um, when I was younger. And so I was like, let's put a couple of barbells in here and some mats and do that whole deal. And he was like, let's do it. And then we just slowly over time at, at the time we had some sponsors help us that were involved with CrossFit and they got us some equipment. Um, and we built up that sick gym, dude. God damn. Well, I want to, I don't want to hold you up too long. I, I really could talk to you forever. I have two more questions kind of. And, but, um, but I, when, when are you coming to LA? Are you ever planning to come to LA? Um, I don't have any plans to come to LA, but <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll let you know when I do end up over there. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, so what was it like growing up as a white kid on Hawaii? Was that a thing? Because you hear, is your wife Hawaiian? Uh, yes. So what you hear, you know, I think stories of like I think everyone thinks of the movie The North Shore, and they're like Rick Barnes yeah. had it hard, man. Like, like was that a thing growing up, or was it not really because you guys just surfed or? Yeah, it was kind. Of, it was kind of a thing, like whatever, like they call them howlies or way who. But it, I never really was a victim of it. Like, um, I mean, kids are just kids. Like, yeah, you know how brutal kids can be. <laughs> so like, it wasn't like for me, it wasn't a huge problem. Um, I think the generation below us, uh, by the time I was kind of going to high school and and doing that whole thing it was a lot more mellower here in hawaii but the generations below us were a lot more combative and i think they probably dealt with it a little more yeah i i, I partied with some uh some i partied with i partied with some fucking royalty like literally royalty uh <laughs> uh uncle buttons is that no way yeah. yeah i hung out with uncle buttons before that he passed he taught me how to paddleboard um Insane. And uh, and the other guy, a massive respect to this guy. He was a, he was a, the baddest motherfucker I've ever met in my life. Uh, he is a guy. I, I'm I'm not gonna. I don't know his name, uh, and I apologize for that. But I've met so many people working for Travel Channel. He was a guy that broke his leg at nor in the North Shore in uh, in the Eddie event. He broke his leg. He was. Uh, I wish I, I wish I knew his name. I'm trying to think. He's old school. He's probably like got to be like fifty five. I think he like was. Clyde Aikau. Is it one maybe. of the Aikaus? Yeah, it's one of the Aikaua. Yeah, I think it's one of the Aikaus. He's yeah. a Hawaiian dude, badass motherfucker. Paddleboarded on a on a shortboard. Took oh, us. He he had these paddle boards with uh with lights underneath them. I don't know if wow. it was. And he took us up this uh, up this river. No this way. Pretty, That's so this, sick. And and he, and we all have these big paddle boards with lights under them, so and all the fish are coming underneath us. And he's on a shortboard, like a fucking five ten paddle boarding on that. What? But wait, oh, that's God. not that's not the story. I wish I knew. I wish I knew this guy's name because I want to give him the respect. So yeah. this this is a badass. In my my opinion, I I respect man man shit. Like when yeah. a man is a man, I can 
respect that. And, and there's certain people in Hollywood that don't understand that. So we're going to do this thing uh, with him. And he's kind enough to come out and take us paddle boarding up this river. And, uh, and we're late. And we're late by like 30 minutes. And as we pull up, one of the producers is like, ugh, this guy's got attitude. And I was like, what? And she was like, this guy's giving us like attitude. He's really upset. Can you just go talk, talk, him, talk to him and make sure he's cool? And I was like, yeah. And I go up and he is a scary motherfucker. Like he's, he's ripped. He's like, I think, I mean, I'm in my imagination is always better than my, you know, than anything else, but like tattoos, like just ripped. And he's like, uh, I go, Hey guys, I'm bird. I'm the host. And he's upset. And I said, is everything cool? And he goes, can I talk? And, and like the Hawaiian, like the, I don't, I'm not going to do it justice, so I won't do it. But he yeah. pulls me over the side and he oh, says no. in no terms, I don't have to fucking be here. I don't give a fuck about television. I don't wow. give a fuck about you or any yeah. of this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart. I want to show Hawaii to people. Yeah. I want to represent my island and I don't want anyone else representing. And you show up fucking late. And by the way, I realized at this point, all his friends, all his brothers and cousins are all his boys are all around me. And it's me and him. And I realized it, if I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm talking to a man right now. We're not doing television. I'm talking to a man at a fucking dock. And I'm like, yeah. and I go, hey, man, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah, the goes, right, right way to go. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, what's that? And I said, I fucked up. This show's on my shoulders and, and we're late because of me. I'll take responsibility. I apologize, sir. Immediately, guy goes, respect. And gives me a handshake and yeah. fucking squashes it. No, no problems. I think we ended up having a couple beers together. But, you know, that's my way my brain writes it. I think yeah. we had a few tall boys and uh, but, <laughs> yeah, cheers and after. No, but his, it's, he was, it's, he was, he was, he was, he was a, a related to Hawaiian royalty and he had broken his leg in the eddy in the one, one of the big wave surfing events. Mm -hmm. One of the best, everyone knew this guy because I brought him up to another person and they were like, fuck you met that guy. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, he almost I'm, kicked my I'm ass. I'm trying to think, but by your explanation, it sounds like, was it Kala Alexander? I have no fucking idea. I, I've, I've met so many people like uh, Uncle Buttons. Is that his name? Yeah. He was the one guy I really, really remember because he was fucking jacked and he was like yep. 56, 60 years old. Totally. totally. And I was terrified of tiger sharks. And he was like, and it was windy and he was just mocking me. He was like, oh, yeah. and he was like, come on. And we were doing a paddleboard race out to a buoy and back. Yeah. And he was, and, and I was overweight and <laughs> yeah. Fuck. He was dude. a cool dude. They were, every time I've met those guys, they've been cool, like, anyone like that it's always been cool as fuck totally and that's like with hawaii it's the respect you show up with is the respect you're going to get in return and the people here are all we call it like aloha and that's like just the friendliness the inviting this hey like if you're cool we're cool like we're going to show you a good time like like he said like he wasn't there for the show he was there just to show you guys some cool stuff like he wanted to yeah. show you and host you the island you know like the the history of it and all of that. And if you come in with respect, they're gonna be all respect back towards you. If you don't, then it's gonna it's gonna get a little edgy, but like <laughs> that's just the way things are. Dude, I got so close to getting my ass whipped. I mean, and I'm, I'm, I mean <laughs> and but you it did the right thing. You were like, shoot, man, that was on me. I'm sorry. And 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 it's not like he's they were like gonna be like unforgivable. He's like, all right, cool. Like yeah. that's it. I think we, I really honestly think we went and me and him had a beer at the back of a pickup truck before we did the thing and kind of bullshitted and talked. And I think I, I threw uncle buttons name and I, uncle buttons had like big fucking respect. And he was oh, like, yeah. oh, you, you, you knew said he's royalty. Yeah. He was, it was, I don't know. I fucking love why I absolutely love why I can't wait to come down and fucking hang out with you guys, do some CrossFit. You guys teach me how to surf. Like I'm your dad. I get yeah. spit out of a barrel. How, wait, how old is your dad? <laughs> yeah, your dad you get spit out of a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I need you and my dad. I, bet, I hate to say it. I think me and your dad would fucking get along very, very well. I think a hundred percent you guys would get along, dude. His We're humor totally is the same so age. funny. He's one of the funniest guys I know. Um, so last question I just got to ask, cause I, you know, growing up in Florida, I was obsessed. Everyone in Florida was obsessed with Kelly Slater. Like, give me a good Kelly Slater story that where you just go, Oh, that's fucking, or, or if you hate him, please trash him. Like that magazine beach grit. That fucking magazine. <laughs> no, we don't hate him. him. No, hey, fuck no. It. What the fuck did they he do to them? <laughs> we don't. We don't hate Kelly. We love Kelly. He's our. He's our neighbor, and he's obviously the greatest of all time and a competitive. Um, 
human, but um, he is a competitive human, and that's what I love about him. Like yeah. I, I saw something on him, and his friends were like, "You couldn't play ping pong with him. He would get so intense." <laughs> no. Like you'll see him arguing in the comments. Like, like one time I posted this barrel of a double shot of, of I went behind someone in the barrel, and then um, I was filmed them through the barrel, and he he comments, "Okay, I'll see you at back door. You can go behind me anytime you want." Like saying he's gonna <laughs> drop in on me. And, and I wrote back, oh, I can hold your hand through some barrels, old man. And, and it just blew up on the internet. And he was like, ah, like, he was laughing, but like things like that, dude, he's in the comments, like competing, like, but we've known Kelly, like since we were little, like we've literally been eight years old. He's like, jump on my back, literally standing on his back. He's body surfing waves in, in the sandbar Aukai beach park. And we're like groms, like. So like we, he's nearly family. We've just known him forever. That's crazy. Yeah. But growing up in Florida, man, Kelly, Kelly Slater is, was, was, is, I'd is, is he's, he's a legend. God, he's a God legend. Over there. Oh, go, go out to Cocoa beach. That's where he, that's what was, was his break. Yep. And, uh, I mean, Kelly Slater is like a fuck. He, t- he DM'd me or, or not DM'd me, uh, commented on me or something. Cause one year we were going to do this sober October challenge where we all learned how to surf and, uh, and it, and it just didn't pan out. And then I was like, hey, we got to get on that uh, that homemade break, that man-made break Kelly Slater's got. And oh, Kelly you Slater, got to go to that. Dude, you're going to get barreled if you go to that. 100%. Uh, I heard, I, that place gives me anxiety. I heard like you, you get like five minutes in the wave pool. I was like, uh, I, I'd just rather not go. <laughs> yeah, you like, go with the right crew. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I, can I do it on a day off where no one's there and, except for just show me how to start it? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, Kelly Slater is a fucking badass, man. Totally. Well, I, this has been everything I wanted it to be. I am such a fan of yours. I love watching yeah, your videos. Thank you so much for having I me. I love dude. your energy. And I'm telling you, I can, I'm, me and Tom are going to, Two Bear Sports Management is footing the bill for a Tahiti okay. trip. And, and, I, and we're going to get Tom and I up on a surfboard at some point. 100%. We're going to make that happen. Thank you so much for having me, dude. Dude, you're the best. You have my phone number. If you ever okay. need anything, hit me up. And uh, and if you ever I'll come to LA, let me right. know. Yeah, I'll let you know. And if I'm coming and, to if I'm coming to Hawaii, I'm yeah, going to please. hit you up. Please. Awesome, brother. Well, All congratulations right, on the marriage. Stay safe. Right. I'll be following Thanks, you dude. online. Okay, have a good one. Take care, Cheers, brother. Man.